Welcome back! Before the dawn of time, a race of druids. Nobody knew who they were or where they came from. We do know, however, that they're not very uh, friendly towards us, so let's try to avoid them. From the east come the sounds of mysterious drums and chanting. That makes sense. It seems we have found the Druid's village. Two paths end at a clearing here. A path to the south leads back to the beach, and a path to the east leads inland. Around the clearing is a village of tree houses. Very literal uh, tree houses. Steps lead up to the tree house's entrance. The steps are sheltered by a worn animal hide. As Alexander peers into the dark entryway, he can make out a well-bolted wooden door. So we're not getting in there. What's with this uh, bull's head? A horned animal skull is on display in the center of the village. Based on its central location, it may perhaps serve as ceremonial protection against danger. Alexander is standing in a small village. Arranged around him in a circle are houses built into the hollows of huge trees. In the center of the village is a fire pit. Although it looks like you might be able to get uh, further to the north from here. From the east come the sounds of mysterious... Yes, we noticed. You actually can't. The way north is blocked by impenetrable forest. Apparently this one route counts as impenetrable for forest. Let's see, a fire pit. A communal fire pit occupies a place of honor in the center of the little village. The fire pit, naturally enough, contains coal. The coals are cold. That's odd, because Alexander definitely smells the smoke of an open fire close by. Don't we know somebody who uh, would uh, want some coal? Alexander reaches into the fire pit and takes a lump of coal. And also, there seems to be a bearskin hanging From the on east this tree. Come the sounds. Yes, we know. A bearskin hangs on the trunk of one of the tree houses. The coarse brown fur looks warm, if a bit flea bitten. A wooden handled scythe hangs against a bearskin on one of the tree houses. That could be useful. Alexander takes the scythe. And despite the fact that he is mostly incredibly polite, Alexander apparently has no trouble stealing from the druids. But then they did uh, kill us before, so I wouldn't feel too bad about that either. From the northeast come the sounds of mysterious drums and chanting. I am sure that that is so. Um, well, we got some coal. Alexander pulls out his magic map. And the king and queen, of, uh, sorry, the two queens actually of uh, the Isle of Wonder were arguing over some coal, so maybe we can use our lump of coal to resolve their dilemma. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. So, back to chessboard land. Hey, some things have changed here since we were last here. Somebody has put um, something on the chair as well as this table. Let's take a look. There's a small bottle on the coffee table. It bears a label that reads, Drink Me. Well, I guess that's appropriate, considering how much this place is like Wonderland. All we need is a Cheshire Cat. Alexander picks up the bottle. I wonder... 
A bottle that says, drink me. Let's try it out. I'm sure that's not dangerous at all. Alexander decides to swallow the potion in the bottle labeled, drink me, to see what happens. <laughs> Suddenly, uh. his vision fades to black. His lungs become too heavy to breathe. His heartbeat slows. Uh-oh. That's not good. Then, beats no more. Oh no, we're dead. Suddenly, his heart takes a lurch, then beats strong. His chest heaves like that of a newborn. His vision clears, and Alexander feels fine. Phew. For a minute there, I thought, what if someone else had seen me and thought, sounds? Yeah, there's a weird glitch here that the doors disappear if you uh, use the bottle in the garden. I don't know why. But man, Alexander really had me going there for a moment. I thought he was dead. Wait a second. Maybe we can use this to make someone else think we're dead. Weren't we trying to do that to El Hazret? We just need to make sure that the right person sees us when we use this potion. And fortunately, we still have some of the potion left, so we don't need to restore to before we tried this. Of course, if this had been King's Twist V, I'm sure that the potion would have been gone after you used it once. But this is not King's Twist V, this is an actually good game, which is not nearly as cruel. There's also uh, something that looks like a cup on the chair. A delicate china teacup is occupying the chair at the moment. That could be useful. Didn't we need a cup for some of the spells? Or one of the spells, anyway? Alexander takes the teacup. Now let's go give a lump of coal to the queens. There's the door again. And there they come! What fortuitous timing! Your Highness may as well spend her royal time contemplating something else. The lump of coal shall be sent to the Castle of the Crown under my name, and that's all there is to it. No, it shan't. Yes, it shall. If the coal is sent in your name, I shall royally decree a ban on all red on this isle. You do, and I shall royally decree that white shall be henceforth used for all mopping up of cabbage stew. You wouldn't dare! Oh, wouldn't I? Oh, it's you! Have you thought of any more of those brilliant ideas of yours? Actually, we found you another lump of coal. Also, there's a whole pit of the stuff in uh, on the Isle of the Mist, so you might want to go there. It would solve the problem uh, a lot more permanently. I found the two of you another lump of coal, so that you can stop fighting over the one you have. Oh, let me see! A lump of coal! And what a beauty it is, too! Marvelous! Now we can stop fighting, sister. Your Highness can just keep the old lump of coal, and I'll take this new one. Quite right. That settles everything. As a token of our endless esteem and royal favor, please accept this magnificent and truly incredible spoiled egg. Uh. Uh. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks. Let me see that lump of coal, your highness. 
It is a beauty, isn't it? Why, it's bigger than my lump of coal. Let me have it immediately. Over my dead body, Your Highness. It's my lump of coal, and it is indeed larger and much grander. Just look at that sheen. I demand you exchange with me immediately. Yeah, that's just about the only reaction you can have to this uh, whole affair. Shrug. I guess they are destined to always be feuding. Over something or other. Oh well. None of our concern. We got a uh, spoiled egg, which um, might provide us with the sulfur we need for one of the spells. The spoiled egg has a slightly yellowed shell that bulges in spots from the pressure of the gases inside. You? Okay, um... What else can we do? Well, I suppose we could try and um, make Alhazred think we're dead using that potion we just found. However, I kind of want to go to the Isle of the Beast because we acquired a number of items that might help us penetrate a bit further onto that island. And I'm really curious to see what else we can find there. Presumably a beast, but anyway. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Oh, I haven't been here for a while. There's a lot of wildlife here, so I can see why they use this uh, island for hunting before its transformation. But now to deal with this stone fellow and his uh, rather deadly arrow. Before we had no way of getting past it, but we picked up a shield in the catacombs. Hopefully that will do the trick. Alexander decides to pass through the gate, preparing the shield just in case. The magic arrow completely shatters the shield. Good thing the arrow didn't hit Alexander. Unfortunately, he has no more arrows. The archer's bow is empty, his lone arrow spent. It's kind of a big flaw in the security system here, considering that if one person tried this, then anybody else would be able to get past this trap. Until somebody comes along and resets it. Anyway, we'll see uh, what lies beyond this stone wall in the next video.